The date is March 23rd, 2019. Thousands of viewers all around Twitch are watching Super Mario Odyssey speedruns in anticipation of one of the biggest speedrun milestones ever. Super Mario Odyssey Any% percent in under one hour. Ever since the game's release over a year earlier, people humor the idea of a sub-hour speedrun of Odyssey, although for the longest time everyone agreed that it was impossible. That is, until the beginning of 2019. Up until that point, several minute barriers were steadily broken thanks to new tricks being discovered and subsequent rerouting, and by February, there were several competitive runners grinding every day in hopes of achieving the first sub-hour run. It was a hard-fought race amongst the game's elite runners, where any big mistake would cost the run, with very little room for error. In the end, on March 23rd, 2019, Nicrovita achieves the seemingly perfect run. 59 minutes, 59 seconds. This achievement was widely celebrated all across the internet, bringing together speedrun viewers in a way not seen in years. Over a year and a half has passed, and since then, 15 people have beaten Nicro's historic run, and the world record time has fallen further than anyone could have ever expected, and the run itself is a miracle. But how could it have been pushed so far, and what makes this run so damn flawless? Well, to answer that question, we need to take a look at Super Mario Odyssey Any% percent speedruns beyond the sub-hour. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are subbed to the channel, so if you enjoy cool speedrunning content, consider subscribing for free. Feel free to change your mind whenever. Now, to begin, within only 24 hours of Nikro achieving 59.59, the best Japanese runner, Goryuya, would also achieve sub-hour, finishing mere milliseconds slower than Nikro. Going into April, the other top runners were grinding for their own sub-hour runs, resulting in a chain of new records from Chaos Pringle, resulting in a 59.57. The record was getting increasingly harder and harder to improve, and there would be no major developments leading towards the end of the month. In late April, four of the top runners, Chaos, Little Curbs, Nicrovita, and Stravos, would appear at the competitive speedrunning event, Pace 2019, where the finals of an ongoing Mario Odyssey Any% percent tournament occurred. On the first day of the event, April 25th, something unexpected happened. After over a year with no new patches or updates to the game, version 1.3 for Mario Odyssey was released, which added Nintendo Labo VR support that admittedly no speedrunner really cared about. But the patch was a total game changer for a completely different reason. Faster load times. They were incredibly fast. About 52 seconds faster than the load times on version 1.0.0 the version of the game used in any percent up to that point. 1.0.0 had been the primary version to speedrun any percent on due to the version exclusive first moon skip trick in the Cascade Kingdom, which saved about 30 seconds, as well as the Sphinx clip in the Sand Kingdom and the Turnip clip in Luncheon Kingdom, which were patched out in the previous 1.2 update. However, the time saves of running 1.0 over 1.2 was only about 45 seconds, meaning while 1.3 had certain tricks patched out, it was officially the fastest version for any percent by about 7 seconds. Another major development around the same time was the discovery of a trick known as Daylight Saving Time Abuse, or DSTA for short, and it's probably one of the most clever tricks I've ever seen in a speedrun. Before the run begins, the date and time of the switch is manually set to a day where Daylight Savings is set to occur, a few minutes before 2am, when the clock will skip ahead to 3am. The trick comes into play in the Sand Kingdom, where a seed is planted. Usually, this seed takes around 20 minutes to fully grow, after which a moon can be attained. However, the game tracks how much time has passed via the Switch's internal clock, meaning that if the seed is planted just before the time jumps forward an hour, it will grow incredibly quickly. The growing animation can be completely skipped if the leap forward happens in a different sub-area, which the speedrun takes advantage of. With this discovery, the Sand Kingdom was rerouted to take advantage of DSTA, as well as faster load times, in order to save about 10 seconds. Heading into the summer, Chaos and Goryuya would trade records a bit, and a new Metro Kingdom route would be used, which would save about 5 seconds. This route replaces the event moons obtained from two musicians, as well as the moon on an island, with the slots moon and both moons in the Bullet Bill Tower sub-area replacing them. 
With good enough movement, this turned out to be faster overall as it skipped the cutscenes that play when a story moon, such as the moons collected from the musicians, are collected. This isn't necessarily the first time that kingdoms were rerouted to cut story moons or triple moons from the route in order to skip cutscenes, but it's a relevant development and this information will be important later in the video. For now, the progression of any percent record was a bit slow and steady, but this would all change in the summer when two Europeans began to take over the leaderboard. For a few months, the Italian speedrunner, Tyrone 18, had been climbing the leaderboard and improving at the game at an alarming rate. And on June 8th, 2019, he got his first world record with 59.32, only to be beaten by Chaos by a second the next day. Ouch. Trust me though, this will not be the last time you hear about Tyrone. A month later, Chaos would then improve the record by another second. At this point, Mario Odyssey seemed to be a pretty optimized speed game. That is, until a 13-year-old Dutch kid named Mitch made huge waves in the speedrun community. On July 10th, Mitch shocked everyone by snagging the Super Mario Odyssey any% percent record with a 59.14. A 16 second improvement over the previous record. How? How did this kid get so good and decimate the record when he wasn't even top 10 when sub hour happened? The answer lies in his movement. Mitch's movement, to put it bluntly, was a step above everyone else's. Mitch is often compared with Nindede, the greatest Mario Sunshine player of all time. Similar to Nindede, Mitch would go for the most insane movement imaginable at the price of lower consistency. If he got a run going, he was zooming away, but his risky strategy always made him more prone to mistakes. That's the crazy part. This run still had a few little mistakes, including this moment where he almost instinctively reset after bonking against a wall, and a sloppy ending with the Pillar's Room. Regardless, Mitch set the bar incredibly high. Beating this run wasn't going to be easy, and it ended up standing for over two months, longer than any of the previous records had stood. Tyrone would finally be the one to improve the record with a 59.09, finally having caught up to Mitch's time and insane skill. At this point, it was pretty clear that either one of these two runners would be able to break the 59-minute barrier. And sure enough, on October 12th, Tyrone would achieve 58.59, the first sub-59-minute run. Pretty amazing, right? Wrong! Check this out! It says on the poll, what should I do next? Any percent for Forex? <laughs> <laughs> 46? I think so. It's oh, yeah, about like goddamn time! 47. <laughs> it's <laughs> about. Uh, it's that! <laughs> it's that. My job here is done. Oh my Dude, god! What? I have no what? words. What the fuck? That's right. Just two days after breaking another minute barrier, Tyrone decimated his own record by 12 seconds. This run didn't have any new crazy new development or new strategies. Tyrone just started to play out of his damn mind in the second half of the run, resulting in a near perfect run for the time. For the time being, Tyrone had no intention of improving this time. Any percent appeared to be dead. One month passed. Two months passed. Three, then four. Four whole months had passed and Tyrone still held the world record. That wasn't to say that there weren't any new developments, however. During this time period, a new trick known as Dino Skip Skip, or DSS for short, was developed in the Cascade Kingdom. As the name implies, it skips a skip known as the Dino Skip, which was a fast method to reach the Madame Brutal boss fight, and had been used since the game first came out. DSS was a much harder strat, which involved triple jumping onto a precise location on this wall in order to reach the boss fight much faster after collecting the first moon. DSS would save 11 seconds if done optimally, but it was pretty hard. Eventually, Tyrone's record was finally beaten by Mitch's 58.42 on December 15th, 2020, which is also the first run to use DSS. With the dry streak finally over, Tyrone and Mitch's rivalry was reignited, with DSS and more advanced optimizations, both runners were capable of getting a time within the 58-teen range. 
Throughout the springtime quarantine, the two top runners were in a league of their own, trading the record back and forth as they slowly approached the 58-minute barrier. Now, a few months prior, if you told anyone that a 57-minute time was around the corner, they probably would have laughed at you. But as the record fell lower and lower, it soon dawned on the Mario Odyssey speedrun community that sub-58 run was no longer a pipe dream, but a likely reality. Theoretically, it was clear that a 57 was possible, but with the tricks developed during this time that could save enough time to break the 58-minute barrier, it carried too much risk to be used in an actual speedrun. In April, Miwi found out that during the escape sequence at the end of Moon Kingdom, there were specific invisible spots where Bowser could stand on along the corners of the wall of the 2D section, and that it was possible to skip the 2D section by precisely scaling the wall using these spots with tight jumps. This became known as 2D Skip Skip, and realistically saves about 7 seconds. The big downside, however, is its difficulty, combined with the fact that it's so close to the end of the run, making it too risky to use in world record attempts. In Snow Kingdom, another 7 second time save was found, where instead of capturing a stack of 3 Goombas and stepping on this switch, you can clip behind the ice wall by jumping at a precise location along this corner. Missing it, however, resulted in a death, losing lots of time. So that was also too ballsy of a trick. Similarly, two roll cancel clips that would lead to faster moons in the Sand Kingdom and the Luncheon Kingdom were ruled out, since those clips were much too consistent in 1.3, and could not save any time after one or two failed attempts. Well, shoot. If those ideas couldn't realistically lead to a 57, what would? Well, the answer came in the form of a kingdom reroute, known as Spewartless Luncheon. Ever since the game's release, Speedrunners have more or less done the same route in this kingdom, which involved collecting 18 moons along the path of two story moons and ending the route after collecting the multi-moon in the pot atop the volcano. However, these moons have a significant amount of cutscenes, and in the spring, a new route would be developed that would collect neither of those moons. By using a tight jump, Mario could barely skip past the spirit boss near the start of the kingdom, and that's the easy part. You see, the consequences of skipping the Spewart boss made it so that the other story moons are unobtainable, which in turn makes the kingdom much harder to navigate. The Potaboos, which you could usually capture to navigate the lava, are nowhere to be found, which means in order to navigate a lot of the kingdom, carefully managed boosts and navigation on the lava must be done. The most ludicrous example involves jumping on these invisible blocks right after Cappy hits them, making them solid in order to reach the magma sub-area. Needless to say, this route was incredibly hard, but it had potential to save 7 seconds, just barely enough for 57 to be realistic. Flash forward to July 2020. The world record is 5810 by Tyron, which had been standing for two months. The run did not use the Spewartless luncheon route. By this point, however, Tyrone and Mitch began to grind any percent with the new route, but neither of them could clutch out a new personal best with it. At their skill level, the run was an insane gauntlet with an unforgiving endgame. Very few world record pace runs would escape Luncheon Kingdom, and the few that did would often die in Bowser's Kingdom, arguably the hardest section in the entire run. No one could catch a break. That is, until July 27th, when on that fateful day, Mitch began a new run.
Five. Oh my god. 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 Fifty-seven, fifty-four. Mitch had beaten Super Mario Odyssey in 57 minutes and 54 seconds, utterly crushing the old record by 16 seconds, which at this point is nothing short of legendary. There have been many times in Super Mario Odyssey's lifespan where people said the category was optimized and that certain miles, such as the infamous sub-hour, could never happen. But Mitch's 57 just goes to show you how far the game truly was from being solved. And that brings us to today. Mitch's 5754 has been standing as the world record for the past five months, longer than any record had previously, thanks to the new routes, tricks, and sheer godlike gameplay and willpower from runners like Mitch and Tyrone. Both of those runners are currently the only two people to have beaten Super Mario Odyssey in under 58 minutes, with third place being over 30 seconds slower. Since then, Mitch and Tyrone have taken a hiatus from any percent, moving on to other categories for the time being, leaving the world record uncontested. For now. It's certainly beatable, but it'll take one hell of a run to do it, and I wouldn't be surprised if it took over a year. If Mitch or Tyrone return to serious grinding, they could probably do it. There are other top runners, such as Lucid or Goryuya, that have been making steady progress, so I'd recommend keeping an eye on those two as well. As far as minute barriers go, this could potentially be the last one broken for possibly a few years. Even if you were to implement the ridiculously hard tricks and clips I mentioned earlier and add them to the current route, Sub-57 still wouldn't be possible. But if speedrunning history has taught me anything, it's to never doubt the seemingly impossible. For now, let us celebrate this insane world record. The blood, sweat, tears, and the dedication it took to take this game so far. As well as Mitch, the king of Super Mario Odyssey. Special thanks to Ganon Slayer, a top Super Mario Odyssey speedrunner, for helping me with the research for this video. Go check them out. Also, thank you all so much for 20,000 YouTube subscribers. We're just getting started, so buckle up as I prepare to even make more awesome content. Also be sure to follow my Twitter as well as join in my Discord server. I'm in there all the time. Again, thanks for watching, and remember to shoot for the moon. <laughs>